Hello and welcome back to Cinematic Universe, everyone. My name is Resto Martinez. Joining me, as always, is David Powers King. Episode 8 of Voltron Legendary Defender Rebirth. We have a new challenger, the Giant Warrior by Witch Hagar. A new enemy machine that pretty much has the design of a pseudo-chameleon while also having 360 degree vision full with energy beams more powerful than the last one, which was a gladiator. And the gladiator pretty much seems like uh, an ant compared to this giant cockroach of a powerhouse. And we also get to find out more mythology about the Balmerans and the secrets behind the crystals and why the crystals are so important to not just the Balmerans, but the rest of the galaxy as a whole. And what an intimidating creature this is. And I the mean, team has to really put their reflexes together to avoid those beams that are constantly being sent to them. And they're also faced with another problem. Balmera is dying. It's about to take its last last breath, and any kind of damage that you do to the surface is killing it even more. So they're in a pickle. They have to try and defeat this creature without harming the planet as well. Yeah, and we also get to see more um, interaction from Princess Allura in this episode. Um... Earlier on in the series, we, we you know, for those of you who have watched the series, her father, you know, passed away 10,000 years ago because of the whole going into cryostasis. And an AI that helps operate the ship and navigate it is pretty much her father. And one of the things that we learn is that the crystal that is used to operate the ship, uh, Princess Allura's family and any other sentient being in the galaxy when they need these crystals to operate their technology they can take the crystals from the balmera that's not a problem but in order for it to be a successful transaction and a peaceful uh, method of having a joint um, understanding and mutual relationship they have to also give back essence to the planet of balmera so that the entirety of its existence can continue to thrive and create more crystals for more people in the galaxy. And the problem is that the Galen Empire has been taking but has not been giving back. And because of that, that is why Balmera is dying. And man, you can throw a rock into the nearby bark on this planet and it'll start screaming bloody murder. And while they are fighting this battle... Princess Alora really steps up and comes up with an idea because she's trying to lead a, an evacuation plan to get the inhabitants out. And while things are going well for the most part, this new roe beast kind of ruins those plans and tr makes it impossible for some of the, uh, the Balmerans to escape. And so what does Princess Alora do? She decides to invoke that same power of her people to uh, kind of get do a give and take with Balmera and uh, but not to give not to take a crystal but to give life force back and she's not, and she's it's not just the same amount of energy that she would use to try and reclaim a crystal she's trying to actually heal the planet which is pretty much life threatening at this point yes i mean it was like yeah this this could kill her <laughs> and she's willing to take that chance. There was a part where the Balmerans just wanted to give up and not, you know, do anything. They just wanted to accept their fate. But Allura, she's like, no, you are not going to do that. I am going to help you. And she stole the show in this episode. I mean, yes, we get to see Voltron have a new weapon that allowed them to fight against the 360-degree bat battle chameleon that they were fighting. But... The idea that Allura was willing to sacrifice herself for a people that she doesn't even know, and she's only and she only knows them based on tradition, that's badass. I don't recall Princess Allura doing that back in the original series. Uh, no, I don't. Mm -hmm. Aside from her piloting one of the lions at some point, I don't recall her doing anything like this, period. 
no, and it's kind of a big deal and serves as a awesome ploy to this plot because even though Voltron now has a new weapon that Hunk, just like how uh, Keith discovered the sword, Hunk discovers a cannon that can be on Voltron's shoulder that can shoot lasers and everything back at the creature. But even with this, they're unable to defeat the Roe Beast. Yeah. It's not until Laura puts her mojo into the planet that the planet itself rises up and defeats the Roe Beast by encasing it in crystal. Yep. Which is awesome! It is. And it also makes me wonder if, if the Paladins and Voltron had that much trouble with this, which is pretty much like a level 2 version of what they were already fighting to begin with, I don't even want to imagine the nightmare these guys are going to have to go through next season. If they need to try, I mean, if they're going to level up the monsters each encounter that they have, absolutely. Because this is just level two. <laughs> I mean, granted, the Paladins aren't that experienced in what they're doing, I understand that. But it's Voltron, the most powerful weapon in the universe. And even as ex as skilled as they are right now, they man, they're gonna die instantly. Well, even didn't Alora also say though that um, something to the extent that you know Voltron may be the greatest weapon in the universe, but it is only as powerful as its paladins. Yeah. So man, every sing every single encounter these people are gonna have is going to rock their world. And so we got the planet. Crystallizing the Roe Beast, everything's all good and everything, except Princess Alora is now out of the count. She is unconscious. She's out. She's zapped. She is. She's all but dead. Yep. And we will talk about that next episode. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Bye-bye.